I believe that the person that you cheated on needs to know. So if you're gonna say like, I'm not gonna tell them because of psychological damage, it's honestly, you're you're not even taking accountability mm -hmm. for what you did. Yeah. Hold you on. You chose to cheat. Disclosing that you cheated to the person that you cheated on is not accountability. That is just revealing That is taking accountability. I, will. accountability. I would consider that as a form of taking accountability <laughs> You're so open. That's delivering open news. About this. That Maybe it's the first step towards it. accountability. Thank Maybe you. Maybe it's it the is. first it's step. Hi, I'm Gen, and I explore social and controversial issues through both sides. And today I'll be moderating this middle ground episode of Cheaters versus Cheated On. We'll be exploring topics such as the personal experiences of people cheating, the emotional toll that it takes on relationships, and why exactly do people cheat? The first prompt is I would forgive my partner if they cheated on me. Agreeers, please step forward. I feel like from the side of being cheated on, I think the biggest thing to understand is that forgiveness is something that everybody does deserve. Um, I think that once we get into the discussion of why somebody cheated, we can really understand whether or not that person is sympathetic and whether or not that person is somebody that you wanna keep around in your life. But I think forgiveness and keeping them in that same relationship are not synonymous. They go separately. I completely agree. However, I do think that forgiveness is something that we give to ourselves, not necessarily somebody else. So in the event that my husband cheats on me, I would be giving him forgiveness so that I could set myself free from any hostility or anger that I may hold on to in the event. I think it should benefit both sides in that sense. Now, whether that other person takes it and uses it to their benefit, yeah. you can't control that and it shouldn't be up to you to try and push that. But yes, also making sure that that forgiveness is for yourself as well so you can move forward, whether it be with that person or alone and not take that burden on to the next relationship if that relationship doesn't work out. I completely agree. And I forgive because I, I've been forgiven. So, and I'm a, a Christian, so I believe in forgiveness. I believe that we should forgive people um, because we have been forgiven. You know, you can have short-term forgiveness and, and long-term forgiveness. And, you know, it's like, are you addressing the root of the issue? And, yes. and really, if you're truly forgiving, and forgiveness is something that comes with maturity and with life experience, you, you, it's the whole circle of forgiveness. You get so much and you release the other person and yourself from anything and then you can move forward from that yes. point. One, you know? one thing that is interesting though that is that there are three people from the cheater side who have sat down but only one on the cheated on. <laughs> that is interesting. I guess yeah. I'd be curious to hear more so about your guys' experiences because it seems like in this instance you were cheated on. Yes. 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 So I cheated on him Yes. Um, and he forgave me. Um, but I guess I'll, I'll let you explain that. Forgiveness is a it's a step by step process. It's not anything that does happen instant. And for us, that was something that that we did step by step. And as you said, getting down to the root of it was a big thing yes. to where all questions have been answered. All things that were left up to an idle mind are no longer there. And so by getting down to the root of it, I can also figure out okay, were there some areas that as a husband, I did not uphold what I needed to be? It might've been that you might've felt emotionally, you couldn't feel like you can come to me. So do you feel like you have equal blame in the cheating that occurred? Can I interrupt? I think that uh, bringing the conversation to uh, the concept of blame, I think you actually kind of have to understand the purpose of blame. Mm -hmm. And I think that the purpose of blame is to shift responsibility when I have conversations around cheating, I really like to steer clear of the blame game because the truth is like we all play a part, <laughs> yeah. society included. Can we have the disagreeers please step forward? Just to go back to kind of the imbalance that we saw there, I'd be curious to hear from the cheated on group first. <sighs> There's a few things I heard that I found interesting. Um, one, you said about not using the blame game. And then also, you when you said about, um, you felt like you may have had something to do with, you know, not being a, a husband or whatever it may be. And those are things I kind of disagree with in the, like, I know most of us walk with good intentions in life, right? We're all trying to be a good person, yes? Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. But at the most part, <laughs> you start off that way, right? Sure. But uh, I guess the way I, I live my life, I don't give anybody any excuse to do something wrong to me. So if you do something wrong to me, you had to kind of go out of your way to do that. And this idea that you start saying, well, it must have been something I did. 
it actually might not have been, it might have been just the other person wasn't where you were at as a human being. And also the other thing I heard was about, you know, forgiving for yourself. I've never understood that um, statement. They did something wrong, I'm just gonna move on. You know, I'm not gonna hold any ill will to you, it just happened. Can I respond to that? Go ahead. So I actually agree with the two things you said about the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I have never understood that either. I just feel like for me, if it works for other people, mm -hmm. that's great. I actually have found healing in not forgiving people. And that's, I think there's a difference. I think I choose not to forgive them and then eventually I am indifferent towards them is what I'm saying. I think there's a difference between not forgiving someone and hating someone. And, and, and I think most of that comes from, that narrative comes from usually the person who cheated saying, you know, you forgive for yourself. But like, mm -hmm. you never hear it coming from the actual person who got cheated on. And again, to that point, it's, it's, it seems it's always connected to if you don't forgive, you're holding on to some ill will. No, I just don't think about it. It's done, and I'll just move on with life. At least for me, I think that it comes back around to honesty. I mean, any of us that were cheated on, I don't think it's any of our responsibility that our partner chose to be dishonest with us about anything. Because even if you assume that, you know, it was something you did, maybe you weren't being open enough, or maybe the conversation wasn't happening that needed to happen, it's still not your responsibility fully, I don't think. You can't force anyone to be faithful or to be honest or to be true. And that's the interesting part that, you know, someone gets cheated on things, well, what did I do? Like, they should never think that. With the early part of our marriage, what I thought a husband was, I go out, I make the check, and I come home and have sex. Mm -hmm. I'm, <laughs> I'm just being completely honest. I didn't see nothing else emotional that I needed to bring to the table. So that does not make an excuse for somebody to go out and do something. Yes, we should go ahead and have communication. We should try to learn how to grow within this. Um, but I, I feel like that was the importance of trying to figure out where did I have any type of flaw as a husband? Because even if we would have decided we're not going to work it out, I don't want to go and keep recreating the same type of marriage. I just want to say, I think it's really interesting that you're the only person from the cheated on and I was the only person from the cheated side. And right. speaking from my personal experience, because my partner also used to be a cheater and we came together and, you know, maybe part of it is just us growing up, you know, or we committed to each other, but we consciously made the decision to grow, grow together, grow separately. And so I think if, if he were to cheat on me, I would not be able to forgive that because it's like well, you promised, we promised each other this growth and we've put all, it would be less about the cheating itself, I think for me, and more about the breaking the promise of the growth that we've made. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to trust you now? For my specific experience, it was more of a physical thing. I was a virgin and I wasn't ready to do that yet. And the guy I was with was a couple years older than me. and. He went out and did that, and I could never forgive him because the physical thing was something that we could never fix. I wasn't gonna have sex with him, you know? So forgiveness for me was very hard because there was nothing to work on for me. So there was nothing to improve that relationship, so I'm, it was over. I'm just curious, if he had, I have no idea what your relationship no, was like. Go for like, it, go for if it. If he had come to you and said, I love you, I care about you, this is something that I really need, how would you feel about like, you know, allowing him to go out and do that? Or would you like, we should just break up then? Totally. I mean, I think that I was getting to the point of potentially being ready. Mm -hmm. um, but after he did that with someone else, then I was like, okay, no. And I literally did not speak to a man for like three, four years. Like it was a very emotionally mm -hmm. traumatizing for me. I was only 16. <sighs> Love is so rewarding when it's good, but it's so painful when it's bad. Even when you know you've been wronged. As time passes, it's hard to heal, especially if you don't have a solid support system. Luckily, BetterHelp, the sponsor of this video, is there for you when you need a little extra support to make it through hard times. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. They have over 30,000 therapists in their network, so it's easy to find a therapist that gets you. To get started, all you have to do is visit betterhelp.com slash jubileemedia to fill out a few questions and to be matched with a professional therapist, in most cases within 48 hours. You can even choose how you want to meet with them, whether through a phone call, video chat, or through messaging if you're not in the mood to talk. And if you feel like your therapist isn't a great match, you can easily switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings and there's no extra charge. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash jubileemedia. Plus, Clicking that link supports this channel and gets you 10% off your very first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. Now let's get back to the episode. Emotional cheating is worse than physical cheating. 
Okay. It's just worse. <laughs> I've been cheated on twice in the past year. The first was physical, the second was emotional. And to me, um, well, I don't want to bring it back to Jillian while she's standing over there, but we were talking about like the concept of virginity and she was only 16. Like the physical cheating aspect, I was cheated on because I wasn't, I suppose, being sexual enough despite the communication that we had going on. I was just kind of being lied to the whole time. But emotionally for me, that's what relationships are built on. So lying about something like that or like having someone else on the side that you're giving those parts of you to when I truly just want to like know the inner depths of like your being because we are in a relationship, uh, it's just worse to me. <laughs> you hesitated to come up. Oh, I hesitated why. to come up because I think the word worse is like, it implies that there is a level of significance to whether you act on it or not. And I think ultimately cheating comes down to managing your own thought life. And as far as what you said about you not meeting his physical needs, I'd like to... Uh, it was her, but yeah. Oh, her, sorry. sorry. You're sorry. good, same deal. I'd love to uh, shirk that off of you because what somebody else does in life is a reflection of them, not a reflection of you. So like as far as the, oh, I didn't meet physical needs of my partner, I think you can't really say that mm -hmm. because if they weren't vocal about it, right? It, absolutely, which is like, that was the main reason and one of the only reasons that we broke up and I called it off and I was still never apologized to. It was never acknowledged that it even happened. Yeah. Because that betrayal was so um, tangent, it was a lot easier for me, like, for me to let go of it. Mm -hmm. um, but having like a deep emotional connection with someone, I like tried again with an ex and then I ended up getting emotionally cheated on. I had much more of a, a deeper investment in the character of that person and I cared very deeply about where we were going in life and how we were growing together. And to sort of have that growth cut off, you know, mm -hmm. is something different entirely. I do like what you said though about using the word worse and like how that- How there's like yeah. a level of significance to betrayal, whether it's actually <laughs> executed with your body or not. Yeah. I think that- It's still uh, a betrayal. Yeah, it's still a betrayal, right? I, so I have a long history of cheating, unfortunately. Um, and I have both physically cheated and emotionally cheated. The way my various partners responded was different. I don't think that it's fair to say one is worse than the other. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of agree. Because at first I was standing back there, I'm like, physical has to be worse. But then I'm like, everybody has a different um, standard or a different experience. Yeah. I can't say what's worse for somebody else, what maybe for me. The other thing is, I don't understand. I'm not sure I even know what emotional cheating actually is. Thank you. Is. That's what I'm I, sitting there I'm like, I'm like, what is, emo yeah, what is emotional cheating? What yeah. that means at all. So emotional cheating, like when, let's say, you're going to someone and talking to them about the problems oh, okay, <clears> okay, okay, in your okay. relationship mm. um, and they're offering that advice, they're offering you uh, comfort. Um, they're giving you everything you, that you yeah, want. Yeah, that you're you, desiring okay, at that yeah, point yeah. when you're, you're actually supposed to be going to, to your spouse or to the person that you're with. I agree with you, but I would take that a step further and say, you can emotionally cheat and like they not know about your spouse or your partner. Like it's about having a relation, like you're talking to them with the way you talk to your partner. You, cause I, I have my, um, my high school sweetheart I f was in love with someone else. I was in love with two people at the same time. It was very complicated. But before anything ever physically happened, I was emotionally cheating on my on my boyfriend at the time because I was talking to this guy like he was my boyfriend too, even though we weren't together. You know, and I know people who have divorced, who have left their marriages because it was like, well, I've fallen in love with someone else, even though we've never done anything physical. Whereas mm -hmm. By that same token, you can also have like a one night stand and it be purely physical and not emotional cheating at all. It's funny because like, it seemed like you're describing when you're trying to get to know about somebody because you want to date them. So that's why it's kind of, it's oh, kind of like really- let me, let, me, kind of, let me help you. Yeah, it's kind of like confusing me. Emotional cheating begins when you have a relationship with somebody that your partner is not aware of. Okay. And a romantic that's... relationship. Yeah. yeah. So for me, you know, I think lots of things. I look at lots of people. I expect that whoever I'm with is thinking whatever they're thinking while they're looking at people. And, and relationships that we all have with each other, you know, for me, like my girlfriends, are, and I've been cheated on and, and cheated, and it's all complex and complicated and based on a case per case basis, mm -hmm. until they take action, some kind of action where they're physically engaging with another person, 
they're not cheating on me as far as I'm concerned because they're living life as a human being and they're just feeling and thinking and fantasizing and doing all the things that we all do because we're human beings and that's that's what we do. And that's, you know? I, and that's how you feel yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, that's how yeah, I feel yeah. about it. That's why I said it about three or four as times. As someone who yeah. has cheated, yeah. did you feel, if you've ever felt any some type of way, whether it be guilt or anything, did you feel worse about emotionally cheating or physically cheating? I've never emotionally cheated. I'm, I'm a human being and I live my life. And if I think something or I, or I have a relationship with her where I'm telling her about my relationship and, I, and I'm falling in love with her, that's okay. I can feel that. But until I do something about it, I haven't cheated. I haven't done anything to that my partner. I've been cheated on multiple times, you know? So it's just like, and it's always been like a physical thing and it's really hurt me. And that's why I think the physical is worse mm -hmm. for me personally than maybe the emotional would be, but I can totally see both sides. Yeah. Think, because emotional is, sorry, yeah, mm -hmm. emotional is difficult too. But for me, the thing that sets my like romantic relationship apart from a best friendship is the intimate, yeah. uh, physical stuff. For me, I can have tight relationships with other guys but I'm not gonna go sleep with them because I'm not romantically involved. Oh, I'm still very close with my high school sweetheart. Totally. We're very good friends. Yes, and, and I have exes too that I can yeah. be like, we're yeah. chill, you and know, it, but I'm not gonna go hook up with you in the car. Like, you know what I mean? Right, like, and we have that trust. Just, like yeah. I said, I think at the end of the day, it's it's situational. It's mm -hmm. for some people, emotional cheating might be worse. For some people, physical cheating might be worse. For some people, it's the same. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Let's, let's move on to the next prompt. Okay. I would date someone who cheated on others in the past. That was so fast. I, can't hear it. I agree wholeheartedly. A person's past is indicative of who they were at that point in time, not necessarily who they want to become or who they are in the present moment. And I think what's most important is who we are in the present moment. Yeah. I agree too because um, I believe people can change. I, I changed. So I do. I believe that. Um, now, can you make someone change? Like, you know, obviously not, but I, I agree with that. Yeah. No, I agree wholeheartedly. I feel like if somebody did something, you know, say for example, in their 20s and they're in their mid 30s now, I can't hold them to that past. Right. There's things that I've done. And so I feel like it would be wrong for a person to say, hey, you can't change, you can't come out of that. And so who am I to say, I'm not gonna date you because you did something to somebody else. And I think those are things that you would only figure out like the surface level stuff early on anyway, before you get down to the deeper details. I, I am currently dating somebody who used to cheat uh, maybe even worse than I did. And I mean, to your point about cheating in your 20s, I think the last time I cheated on anybody was maybe like five to seven years ago. And, you know, like I was saying before, my partner and I, we made a commitment to each other to help each other be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. And I'm very secure in my relationship. I, I have my moments, but that has more to do with like me than it does him. When he goes out, I'm like, oh, See you later. Like it doesn't, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that he is faithful. Since I began my marriage as an affair, the man that I have been with for the last 10 years is the man that I cheated with. I proceeded to have three of his babies and we now have a fabulous life. But in the beginning, the amount of paranoia and anxiety that came from the fact that you cannot control anybody else's behavior but your own was insane. And so I think coming to terms with accepting the realization that what is inside of my control and what is outside of my control was liberating. I'm interested to hear the disagreeers because again, <laughs> I think we have three people on the cheater side mm -hmm. and then one on the cheated on. So disagreeers, please step forward. I don't, dis I don't disagree, I just, I didn't hear the prompt, so. so I, I mean, actually, yeah, I think I, honestly. I mean, everything everybody said sounds great on a Christmas card, I guess. <laughs> like, if I'm being honest, because at the end of the day, I think, I, I, I don't say it disrespectfully, I mean, at the end of the day, we all still are human beings, right? And we go off experience, okay? For instance, in my situation, I was married, but at the time, I didn't know how many times prior to that, that she cheated, right? So again, when you meet somebody, you don't straight away know off the bat, oh, they've been cheating. As you go along and as you go through the situation, you start to go back to this conversations and stories you've had, and it's like, oh, that was the behavior that was always there, you just didn't know it, right? Would you take a banker who's stolen money in the past? You're kind of gonna be like, eh, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Like, so it's, I think it's situational mm -hmm. and how you meet the person and how you grow. Like, even you said, when you had your affair and now you're married with 10 years with three kids, it grew into something, but you started off with paranoia, but 
right. it, 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 it grew into something real, right? So I think it's, again, very situational. I mean, it was, it was even real in the affair, okay? Mm -hmm. So, like, I kind of want to get ahead of the narrative that, like, people fall in love when they cheat because it's a fantasy. And I think if it were a fantasy, it wouldn't hurt so bad, right? Mm -hmm. So I really like to keep it in the reality sector uh, just because it, I think it invalidates the experience. And what you just shared actually hits on the fact that your wife, ex-wife, mm -hmm. your ex-wife had serial cheating. And I am of the belief that serial cheating exists if you don't understand why you do it. So what, if we do not actually do the deep dive and understanding why we behave the way that we behave, we'll never be able to correct. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, she was deceitful with you, right? Like, I think that if I get the opportunity in the future to go into another relationship, which it's already disclosed on the internet, so whatever, but I'm going to be upfront, you know? like. I have a history of deceiving people I love, and I am capable of it. I'm curious, do any of you guys have kids? We do. Yes, we do. And I, I think that brings up a whole other dynamic for me when I went through my, because I had kids involved, mm. and that was kind of like, and then, you know, it's like, it, not saying that's worse or better, because cheating is cheating, regardless. Mm -hmm. But again, being real and being a human being, you're going to react a different way because you've got kids involved. So I'm going to expose Do you think you're going to be a lot more you know, when you go and date again, would you be a lot more stringent on your requirements than now that you do have your own kids? I think that's a, just a natural thing. Not saying that's justifiable, but like, you're gonna have standards. You've been through one thing, there's certain things that you're gonna not tolerate. The whole dating thing is kind of put on hold because my focus is on kids, especially in a society that downplays fathers in their kids' lives. And because I came from a two-parent ha household, I'm very like, I'm going to be there for my kids no matter what. Mm. Like even right now, if they're called right now, I'll be out of here. I, I want to hear more from the disagree. Is, is that like a requirement now that if they were a cheater in the past, you won't even consider dating them? Well, or is it case by case? It's interesting. It, it, for me, I think it is case by case. The reason, the main reason for me disagreeing with this prompt was because it's about the serial cheating thing. Like the, per, one of the, the person who physically cheated on me was a serial cheater before me and has continued to be like since our breakup. And I would never, ever, ever touch that with a 10-foot pole again. <laughs> I was a serial cheater. Um, <clears throat> How'd you change? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm about to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. I'm the only child of a single mom, uh, so there was no father at home. There was no example of what a healthy relationship is in terms of uh, a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I grew up uh, with a lot of female energy, so I had aunts and grandmothers and stuff who were all raising me. So I had a very emotional aspect to, to my being. And so because of that, I craved female attention. And so whenever females would give me attention, it was just like, oh, if they wanted to do whatever I was on board, I'm like, let's go, you know, it's life and, and this is great. And then after about, you know, after starting to mature and grow up a little bit, I'm like, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel like the right thing to do, you know. I can't even explain it. It just kind of descended into my being. And I was like, this is not you. You're not this person. And, and that's where I found one sense of my character and integrity about myself. I, I am also a serial cheater and my partner was a serial cheater as well. And we were very honest with each other in the beginning. As soon as it was serious, you know, hey, I have this history. Oh, me too. And he was able to communicate to me, this is why I made these horrible choices. So I am confident that he wouldn't make those choices again. For those who have been serial cheaters and now found themselves or gone through and understand, I guess, what would you say to the people who have been serial cheating on? Because it's interesting, like, you guys have gone through something and you figure stuff out and, the, and you, you always hear those people who are like, why am I always finding that guy or that, that girl and they're always cheating on me? Like, how, like, what, like, what do you say to them? I'm speaking from experience, not with cheating, but with other things that sometimes when someone has trauma from a relationship, that you enter your next relationship thinking, oh, this person's gonna save me. Mm. This is gonna be the person who fixes my trauma. And it becomes this cycle of trauma where that person then is like, oh, this person thinks of me as their savior and they'll take advantage of that. And that is not, like I'm not victim blaming, that is not to say that like, and it's your fault. No, but that's a relationship thing. Yeah. What you're talking about, what you're talking about is like, in relationships, when you find yourself finding the same mm -hmm. kind of people, yeah. you have to stop finding people and go, yeah. What that's is it about me? What do I have to figure out about me and what's going on? Well, I keep, 
yeah. and how I feel about other people and what my boundaries are and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the types of energy that you might be unconsciously uh, like, like looking attracting. for. Yeah. Yeah. Not even necessarily attracting, but like sometimes when a person is traumatized in a certain way, unconsciously, unconsciously. you will chase that looking trauma over and exactly. over again. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I think what you said about boundaries, I mean, that is the key. And I think a lot of people don't understand that like boundaries is not saying like you can't do this because you can't yeah. control other people like like yeah. we we're saying. Mm -hmm. A boundary is like, if you do this, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the consequence of the person crossing that boundary. There are much worse things that can break a relationship than cheating. Join our middle ground Patreon to watch this exclusive prompt. It's okay to express attraction to others while in a relationship. As the only person from the cheated on section, <laughs> um, I, I think that it is okay because personally for me, again, like talking about how I think that relationships are built on honesty and communication, I would rather know that you have attraction to someone than you just keep that on the back burner and not tell me. Like, let me know, like, let me know. It, attraction is human. Love, love is only human, desire is human. Um, I, I have not cheated on anyone. I have absolutely no plans to cheat on anyone. But like, if I, if I found someone attractive, I would tell my partner, my current girlfriend is amazing, and I would hope that she would feel open in telling me that as well. And I like to open a lot of my conversation, I mean, a lot of my relationships with that conversation and just like, be like, hey, can you just like let me know if anything goes that way? <laughs> well, I love that what you just said because it really speaks volumes to your individual security and in revealing your authentic self inside of your relationship. So well done, you. I also think that if we have an innate response to something that we see and we actually don't give a voice to it, we're ultimately putting ourselves in a place of denial. Mm -hmm. And uh, denial is not just a river in Egypt. And uh, what it ends up doing is you start suppressing yourself and making yourself smaller for the comfort of having your relationship, mm -hmm. which then means your relationship becomes the goal rather than you being an individual who can be seen, valued, and understood inside of the relationship. You know, me and my partner have shared these things, but like I also have struggled with my own insecurities. And so he always makes sure to add in like, but like you, you know? So I think it it depends on on who it is, but I, I think I agree that yes, it is obviously healthier to give voice because then of course, like if I don't know, let's say my partner finds someone attractive and I catch him looking mm -hmm. and then I'm like, why are you, you know what I mean? And, and so then I might get suspicious. It's like, why have you not said anything to me? But wouldn't you say that your insecurities are for you to manage, not your partner? Oh yeah, yeah. no, yeah, no, I mean, that's that's So him issue. or her changing their behavior because of your insecurities would lead them to a place of inauthenticity. Oh, I want to make it very clear. I, I didn't ask him to do that. Oh, okay, That's okay. Just, that just comes from him. He just, and maybe it comes from him because he knows I've struggled with insecurities, but I haven't said to him, and you need to do this. That's not, okay. it's just him yeah. expressing yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for me, it's like when I start a relationship, I want communication, you know, mm -hmm. and it's very important that we're able to talk with each other about everything because we're two human beings who have feelings. And mm -hmm. unless you act on those feelings, you know, and, and sometimes I think talking about it can keep you from acting on it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, all that openness can keep things, you know, uh, just, it, yeah. I think it can help. Well, the, the partner that um, physically cheated on me, I don't know if she's fully polyamorous, but that's sort of where she tends to lean. And I knew that going in, but she was not being real with me about it. Mm. So like, I would rather you come tell me when you find someone attractive and we discuss the possibility of even trying that, mm -hmm. than you to just go behind my back and not do that. Cause I don't think that I'm poly, but like, I would rather, yeah. I would rather have honesty and communication and openness. On and that fronts. is cheating. I think if somebody yeah. is polyamorous and they're not honest, and they're not honest about, about it, that is absolutely So yeah, cheating. we there started has off to be with that. But. <laughs> because I am queer, I, you know, I often will find like women and non-binary people attractive and my part my partner is a male and he's very okay with that and not in like a gross creepy way but like he he understands that like I'm also going to be attracted to like these other genders and so us discussing you know who we find attractive is a very natural part of the relationship. Yeah, it's like yeah. discussing, you know, day-to-day -day life, yeah. I think. And I reassure him too. <laughs> I'm always you. like you're 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 the best. <laughs> I personally don't believe that there should be any attraction to anyone, uh, while especially for marriage, speaking on marriage, uh, I, we believe in monogamy, we believe in one 
you know, man and, and man and wife. And I do believe that we should not have any type of attraction to anyone. It leads to problems, it, it, and it, it absolutely can lead to, um, you know, even cheating. Yeah, if you are feeling that way in your relationship, then obviously that does need to be expressed. Um, but and that tells a lot about, you know, hey there's something deeper going on in your relationship that needs to be fixed. So you're saying like you walk down the street or you walk down the street, you've never seen, a, you know, an attractive man been like, oh, like that man's hot. Never. I don't, I don't look at other men and think that, you know, I, I can't do that to, especially being a Christian, I, I can't, I don't, I, I can't look at other men and say like, oh, that man is, you know, Se if I can't be it, sexually, sorry, I'm not sexually because you're Christian or is it because you're you? Now, it's because I am, I, I am a believer and I do believe in the cross. I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe that he is my savior. He's my Lord and savior. Right. And I believe in the Bible. I believe in the whole Bible, not just a little bit of the Bible, but the whole entire Bible. Okay. It's funny because part of me is like, no, but part of me is like, yes, because we are human beings mm -hmm. and attraction is part of life. So I will say that. It's funny, that worked against me, meaning most of us, when you go out and date somebody, I'm assuming you find them very attractive, right? Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm, I'm going to expect people to look at my wife or girlfriend as they're walking down the street. And, you know, even though sometimes it's not, it's rude to make certain comments. Mm -hmm. I've been in that, but I was the kind of person where I was like, I didn't care because as far as I know, she's with me and she's going to get looks. But because I didn't react, that was a problem mm. because I didn't get jealous. And I'm like, why am I jealous? I'm with you. This is where I got confused. Are people just coming up in your relationship saying, hey, he's attractive, she's attractive. Yeah. She's like, how does that work? I mean, I guess, personally. Yeah. My, my boyfriend's the same way. Yeah. He, he is like, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> he, wa he wants me to like go out and, and people look at me and he's, and I think that's, of course, you know, sometimes I, you know, I want him to be a little, you know, uh, you know, of course, yeah, of course, a little bit. Yeah. But, but I think, I actually think that's right. <laughs> I actually think that's a healthy way to go is to be secure in the relationship, be like, yeah, my partner is hot and I get to be with them. I think that's a healthy way to go. And the other question is, is, is this in the same line as emotional cheating, because I've just kind of learned the definition of that, <laughs> that and it. then you've just said that, and I'm seeing back, and I'm like, wait, like, this what? sounds like emotional cheating. No, I, yeah. I, 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 I would say confused. emotional cheating is, is like you're developing a romantic connection mm -hmm. with another person. And emotional cheating is also secretive, most of the time. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Having an open conversation with your partner about like, I mean, it's, uh, it, you watch a movie and you're like, oh, you know, the yeah. actress is kind of hot, yeah. you know? Or, like with my current boyfriend, I am honest, we honestly make jokes about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, are you into her? Are you into her? And he's like, he's like, no, you know? But like, well, obviously, I know, I know that he like <laughs> might think that she's pretty, yeah. but that's Loneliness. attraction, that's a physical attraction. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to a relationship that you can bank on. It's like mm -hmm. an emotional thing or like, are you there for me when I call you? One question, mm -hmm. do you think based on that, do you think that's a healthier way in that, you know, sometimes you might joke about it that, you know, out of our choice that we might find someone attractive or to just keep that hidden into yourself? Well, okay, so I think you should definitely, like if it's a, a celebrity or something, like obviously I'm not gonna go and like, and two, yeah, I think too, like crushes. when you're saying attraction, there's attraction and then there's sexual attraction. So I think that there there needs to be, there, there are two different things. I used to tell him like, oh my God, when I was little, I used to love like Rasby, Chris Brown, all of them. Like <laughs> I used to think that they were so like, you know, handsome, but like in my marriage, I, like I don't, I don't see another man and be like, ooh, uh -huh. like he is. I'm I have a question. Yeah, no. like, I'm not, like, <laughs> okay. I have a question. Yeah. If you guys are done talking, I don't want to interrupt. Do you have something to say? Yeah, and so I, I think that also defining it with, within your relationship is very important yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah. Like, totally. What to works say, for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we may look at the terminology different. And so like for us, for example, if I say that I'm attracted to somebody and we had to break this down even in our relationship, yeah. If I say I'm attracted to somebody, that means that I'm willing to pursue them just within mm -hmm. us. That's what that's what we came to an agreement of. Now I may say like, oh, they have a nice hairstyle or they have nice eyes or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's just a quick acknowledgement and we may compliment them on it and just keep yeah. it moving. Mm -hmm. And that's just in, in our definition of what we have within our marriage. If you cheat on someone, you are not in love with them. 
Agreeers. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I messed that up. Oh, no. Agreeers? Huh. Oh, sorry. Apologies. You are not in love with them, yeah. right? Yeah. No. Okay. At first, I stuttered because I was trying to think in their own right, they may think they're in love, but as a flat statement, I don't think they are. If you really are truly in love, it's all you think about is that other person, right? You want to be with them, you want to try and do right with them, even though there may be certain things you do up and down that may not displease them, but you're learning together. But going out and being unfaithful to them and then turn around saying you still love them, it just doesn't sit right with me. Or it doesn't logically make sense to me in, in that aspect. Thoughts? Okay. Because I know you're itching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm itching. I think that falling in love is an experience. In my experience, I had never encountered the experience of falling in love. I can say with certainty today that my episode of cheating was definitely the experience of falling in love. When I was with the partner that I cheated on, it was a part of a plan. There was a plan to get married. There was a plan to have kids. There was a plan to make sure everything we did was in the best interest of each other. Whereas the aspect of falling in love, there was no plan. I crossed paths with somebody who lit my soul on fire and all logic went out the window. Was that, sorry, was that love though or lust? Oh, it was, it was, it was so much, it was so much. So I think that when I think of the word love now, I actually replace it with the word want. I think that the statement that was made about not being in love with somebody, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't have capacity or capability to love him. I certainly was loving him in other ways. Again, we, we, we're all doing this. We kind of like try to figure out what the statement means and reading into it. But as the, but as the flat statement, I don't think all that's entailed. Because again, there's different types of love. There's also each person's way they look at love, what you think love is, at what age. Though maybe one thing, that even now you just said, now you look at love a different way. So yeah. it, it gets kind of complicated. But at, at the base level, I think, uh, I just feel like it's like, uh, nah, you, you didn't really love them. Even, even on your own uh, description of what love means to you. Think about what love means to you when you cheated did you meet that standard of what love meant? Yeah, I think what's tricky about it, right, was since I had, I'll say these idols of mm -hmm. marriage, family, mm -hmm. you know, all of that, I was more in love with the idea of what those things were than the person that I put into the role. Which is, not, which there's right. nothing wrong with that, because again, we all come from experiences. So, but, but being able to kind of look back and compare, I think that Comparison is the thief of joy, right? And what it does is it steals all of the value from the experience that was still very much valid. Yeah, no one's saying it might not be valid, but it's what is still love, though. Because, like I said, you I don't made... think I don't I don't know <laughs> if. And it's hard to. I, I get what you're saying. You don't know because again, you were in that. It, when you were in there, you were in it, and mm -hmm. you've grown, and you moved, and you've changed. Does that yeah. satisfy your yeah. question? Yeah. Yeah, so I agree. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you can be in love and cheat on somebody. Mm -hmm. I want to respond to something you said. That I'm <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, okay, right in there. No. You, yeah, you said that when you're in love with somebody, they're all you think about, that you just want to be with that person all the time. And I vehemently disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I think, and for me, obviously, I disagree with this. I can say that I really, truly did love the people, or I should say most of the people that I cheated on in those relationships. I based my value and I based my identity on those relationships. That person was all I thought about. And it almost was like I trapped myself. It was like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then I sought outside of that relationship. I think that they say like um, someone shouldn't be your universe. They should be a planet in your universe. So it's like I have friends. Sometimes I'm just like, bye, you know, and I go hang out with my friends. You know, my family is very important to me. He is not my world. And this is the healthiest relationship. That is my universe. And I was saying that more metaphorically, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But in, even, in, even in that, you were infatuated and everything was him and you were giving all. Then, then, mm -hmm. then the question is, mm -hmm. were you in love then? That's a good point. That's a, that's I, a, I, I, I'm, I'm just asking that yes. as, just based on what you're saying. Like, like in my first serious relationship, for sure, mm -hmm. I was in love with him 
and he was my first real love, and I was in love with him, and I still made the choice to cheat. It was a choice I made, it was a selfish choice. I felt extremely guilty afterwards. So I think it depends, but I think you absolutely can be in love with somebody and still make bad choices based mm -hmm. on selfishness, anger, insecurity, whatever it may be. I believe that we can grow in love. <clears throat> I believe that there is portions of our love that's lacking mm -hmm. and then we can actually gr like, you know, grow in that. So I I don't believe that just because you 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 cheated on someone doesn't mean that you like you don't love them. I believe that, you know, that there can be love there, but there's something there that just is causing that portion of it to just be almost like in depletion. Like I couldn't love him fully the way that I needed, the way that he needed to, because there was something there that that was lacking. Like I I didn't have the understanding of, you know, what it meant to be a wife, what it meant to be a partner. Falling in love is not a choice. You meet someone, it happens for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you're compatible. Staying in love is a choice. You are choosing, and perhaps in that moment, you are ch not choosing to love that person, you're mm -hmm. choosing not to love that person, and then maybe you can choose to love them again. I'm not, as, I'm not saying falling in that love, but you, love, to continue loving somebody is an action. I do think that falling in love is a choice. Oh, okay. And uh, the reason that I think falling in love is a choice is because you allowed it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when I think about the experience that I had, I had full autonomy in that situation, right? I could have immediately went to my husband and said, I, I've caught something, there's something magical here, something. I gotta go. But you caught, and that's what I'm saying, like, I was still talking, we were not together, I was still talking to my ex when I met my current partner. Mm -hmm. And I told my current partner at the time, I don't wanna be serious with you. I never intended to catch feelings with my, with my current partner. I, I just kind of fell in love with this guy. You know, it's interesting, the prompt is uh, <clears throat> in love. And some people didn't use that when they were talking, they're saying love, mm -hmm. not in love. Mm -hmm. And to me, in love and love are two different things. Yeah. I fall in love as a human being with other humans, men, women, whatever. I fall in love very easily. I believe in love. Love is the driving force in my life. So I was in love with every woman that I cheated on. I was in love with them. If I loved them mm -hmm. truly, that would have been a different story, maybe. Mm -hmm. But to me, there's a difference between being in love So your capacity to love changed. Lo and you love somebody. Right? It's so interesting because I actually, in my mind, view it like the opposite. Like, I love so many people. I would, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I love my friends. I love my family. Mm -hmm. I love people that I'm like, oh, we've just met and I love you. Like, in love, when you fall in love, you're in love with somebody. It just, it stirs something up. It's different. I think it's, we get the yeah. semantic. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah it's like, semantic. Semantic. It's, it's semantic. totally like, semantic. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, it I feel like we should bring oh, up so, limerence yeah, yeah. maybe for a second. Mm -hmm. Why we're all talking about falling in love. I feel like textbook psychology brings up limerence all the time. And they actually kind of just like shirk the entire affair experience under this word. And because it's- the world that doesn't know what limerence Limerence is a chemical reaction inside of your brain in the very early stages of a relationship. Okay. So it occurs between mother and child during birth. And what they say, or what a lot of people say, is that limerence is actually to blame for, and <laughs> I'm not laughing, but I am. Um, <laughs> they say that limerence is actually the reaction that is at play psychologically between affair partners because it, it creates this infatuation. It creates the all the ecstasy feelings mm -hmm. of being in love. So it's I like just, a drug. Yes, you guys yes. know the, um, a limerent oh. object, a limerent addiction. Do you guys know the 70-30 the theory? It's, it's like mm -hmm. the layman's yeah. number. Yeah, that you're in a relationship with someone and they have, and you love them, and they have 70%, because nobody's perfect. They have 70% of the things that you're looking for, and then you meet someone that has that missing 30%. And you're like, oh, this person has, has everything that I'm missing. And then you go and you cheat with that person is that 30%, and then you realize, yeah. oh shit. <laughs> they ain't got that they, 70%. Yeah, the 70% yeah. is gone now. Yeah, I'm gonna start calling my husband the 30 percenter. I would rather not know that I was cheated on. It's 
lonely up here. So I think my perspective on this has shifted quite a bit uh, after the last year since I've been dialoguing so much with both betrayers and the betrayed party. And I think that there's slight benefit to the person who has been betrayed if the betrayer has already come to a decision about leaving the relationship. I think that our whole truth is it not necessarily a obligation to give to everybody? Did you let your husband know when you cheated, oh, or yeah. your ex-husband know oh, yeah. when you cheated on him? Yeah, I told How him. How did that conversation? It was awful. It was horrible. It felt like I was giving him more information than he needed. What had happened was I fell in love with a colleague over sleep, overseas. I was like, there's no way this can be happening. I am married. I can't do this. And then I slept with him and I went back home and I moved out and I said, okay, I cannot be trusted with this person. And I disclosed everything and dropped the hammer and then, and then just went on my way to an apartment by myself. If you have cheated on somebody, the psychological effects on that person need to be considered. Your perception of everything that had occurred is tainted because you're wondering, well, was she thinking about me in this picture that we took? Was she thinking about him? And I think that there is just a lot to consider when you are deliberating on how much and what to share. I love everything you just said. I agree, but with like a caveat of um, I'm thinking of this from the cheater's perspective. I always told my partners when I cheated on them, but I told them for the wrong reasons. I told them to alleviate my own guilt. And that, the, when the fact is, I should have just ended the relationship. And so my thing is, I wouldn't want my partner to tell me just so they could beg me for my forgiveness and let's move forward, da-da-da. I would only want them to tell me in the context of like, and I'm breaking up with you. Like, and, and no like details or anything. It would just be like, I'm breaking up with you. Oh my God, why? Mm -hmm. I cheated. Mm -hmm. And I obviously can't be with somebody that I would cheat on. Like that would be, so, so yes, I would want them to tell me, but like only in that context of like, I cheated, we have to break up. I believe you owe it to that person no matter what. I believe that the person that you cheated on needs to know, and, and not only that, it's the secrecy, like it, that it hurts so much more when you're keeping it a secret from them and, 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 and not telling them anything. I, I, I truly believe in confession. I believe you need to, I believe that needs to be said. And they, like, they, they need to know that. That's, they, they need to know that. Yeah, I, I know you mentioned like that. psychological damage. What, what would, how would you respond to that? I would say it is not my place to dictate what somebody else needs. It's their place to tell me what they need. Initially telling them that, hey, I stepped out and I cheated on you mm -hmm. is, a, is a necessity, mm -hmm. just point blank period. Now, how far you go into details is going to then at that point be, okay, how much does that person ask mm -hmm. to, to where they may want to try and figure out okay, why did this happen? What happened? Who did it happen with? When? If they, if they ask those questions, then I think you definitely owe it to them to answer it, regardless of what you, what you may feel like for, uh, to your point where you brought up psychologically. I feel like at that point, once you've already cheated, like psychologically, they've already taken a lot of damage. So therefore we still have to- If you don't know about it, it doesn't do any damage. Well, but I have to but say there's one the, thing. You did say, I don't want to be with someone who cheated on me, right? So, but you agreed that you would never tell the person, right, if you cheated on them. So let's say you're in a relationship. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, but you, that's, you came forward as an yes. agreeer, right? And then just before we all came forward, you said, I would never want to be in a relationship with someone who cheated on me. Yes. And if they neglected to tell you that, then you would technically be in a relationship well, then I wouldn't who cheated on me. Let me. Then I'll say I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with somebody I know cheated on me. And that's why I'm saying. Got it. So okay. I guess I'm, I'm not agree or disagree. I'm more in the middle of totally. like. I would want them to tell me I cheated on you and therefore like we should break up. Um, in my situation, I found out. Oh. But if I'm being honest with you, I don't know if it would have been worse or better if they told me. I'm being honest with you. I don't even know how to comprehend that. Like me finding out, then you bold face coming to me and saying, 
I did this, this, and this. It doesn't change the outcome. It, yeah, it's like, I don't think it makes any, well, me well, personally, I, I, I don't know. That can be subject to any, like, yeah. you know, everybody. Like, but at the end of the day, I feel like when you're holding something back from, it's honestly, you're you're not even taking accountability mm -hmm. for what you did. So if you're you're going to say, like, I'm not going to tell them because of psychological damage, yeah. Hold you on. chose to cheat. Hold on. Disclosing that you cheated to the person that you cheated on is not accountability. That is just revealing That is taking accountability. I will. Accountability. I, accountability. I would consider that as a form of taking accountability. <laughs> You're so open. That's delivering open news. about this. Listen. That's delivering news. That is it's a form of taking accountability. Thank you. It's, it's the first step. step. It's, step. it's interesting. It's not because accountability. accountability. Be open let, about let, this let's, one. Let's let her respond. Let's let her respond. Be open. Okay. Girlfriend, okay. Right. I'm just saying, you're very open about it, but you're like, it's like you, it's hypocritical. So when you're when you're saying like, I I have the right to withhold this information for the sake of psychological damage, but you chose to cheat. You're you're talking about the benefits for you. You're alleviating your guilt by telling somebody what you did. You are achieving relief by doing a confession. And what I'm saying is. Maybe it doesn't have to be that person. All right. Oh. As someone who's been cheated on. I was about to ask the same question. Oh. I guess who else would you tell? I would tell a therapist. I would go and I would check myself into therapy and I would say, holy sh I've derailed my life and I don't know what I'm doing. But I don't want to cause any more damage and therefore please help me guide me in my next steps. If I'm a how good much more therapist selfish is that though? Will, to be allow selfish. you. selfish. It's still it's Oh, I'm still very selfish. selfish. I'm I Actually to be honest, I think my both, number think one priority is me. <laughs> me. And that was the biggest lesson I and learned. And is it still like cheating. that in your relationship oh, today? Absolutely. Well, if I want to show up to a thriving relationship, a thriving relationship requires a fulfilled individual. And if I do not have me at the primary center of my decisions, I will start making decisions for other people. And what that means mm. is they start to lead my life. No. I don't. We don't believe I, I actually changed my, I think I've changed my opinion. I didn't, it didn't occur to me the idea of like finding it. Like that just didn't occur That's what I'm saying, me. like. If it's for me, if it's between walking in on my partner cheating, I mean, that would just traumatize me. <laughs> versus like my partner coming to me and saying, listen, I cheated. I would prefer the latter. I would want the choice. Do I want to move forward in this relationship or do I want to break up? And I would want to give my partner that same choice mm -hmm. to put the ball mm -hmm. in their yeah. court yeah. and say, this happened, mm -hmm. this is how I feel about it, which might be like, and we need to break up or I don't want to break up or whatever it is. I did this, this is how I feel. How do you feel? Do and you want to stay with me? Do you want to work this out or not? When you're 10, you're the person, I'm always curious, like, what do you, ex do you, what do you expect from the other person? Mm -hmm. And that's where I start to question, are you doing it for selfish reasons because I expect them to say, you know what, we'll work through it. I don't think you can or, expect anything. Which is, yeah. you have to go on without it. I'm curious, like at the time, yeah. do you, oh. can you recollect or remember what you were thinking? Oh, at the time? At the time, yeah. What you when were I, thinking when you said, I'm going to tell. There were times I cheated that I did not tell my partner. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about that too now. When I told my partners that I cheated, it was out of guilt, mm -hmm. it was out of shame. <laughs> and my, I wouldn't necessarily say expectation, but my hope was that they would forgive me. Okay. And I, I did, I, I guess that maybe- Wait, I have a question really quick. Did telling them eliminate your shame and guilt? No, of course not. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> curious if you're, if you're, I'm curious if you're open. Wait, let's, yeah. let's actually oh. dig into that. I guess what was kind of like your point there? If you are disclosing information to somebody else, an effort of releasing something that you feel is holding you back, shame and guilt, that is actually not the effective solution. Mm -hmm. The effective solution is going into the shame and guilt, acknowledging it and understanding why it's there. Mm -hmm. Shame tells me I am not aligned with my value system and the way that I operate in the world. But, but, you're, but, you're, missing, but, but, you're, but you're missing the point of the other person's time. You've, you've ruined their, pretty much ruined their life. You've used oh, up their time. On. No, no, no. Hold on. Wait a second. You, so you don't think you... Wait a second. Go ahead. I think that the only person who has the power to destroy my life is me. This I mean, you can say that. You can say that now as a person who's grown and gone yeah. through something. But when you're in the situation, when you're in a relationship with somebody and they don't know that you're cheating on them, you think like you why, owe that to... Why would I develop a dependency for my life's purpose? But it sounds no one's like saying it's a dependency. <laughs> no, it sounds like you're trying to say that 
I should just be able to do whatever I want. How you take it is all up to you, but I'm going to have the freedom to do whatever I want. Oh, no, no, no. It hurts you. Maybe That's you what it sounds like. Maybe you didn't hear my first statement. I agree that you don't always have to disclose a betrayal to the betrayed person. I think that you always should should give that to them. It's not in a, in, it's not in a sense to, to, to try and relieve any type partner. of, any type of uh, you know, guilt or shame that you have. It's not to say that, oh, once I do this, I'm going to feel better. No, it's, as you said, to put the ball in their court mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I got to be upfront with you because just think about, you're thinking about the emotional trauma of what you're going, what they're going to feel mm -hmm. when you say it to their face. Mm -hmm. But what about the trauma that they'll feel if they hear it from I'm somebody sorry. behind their yeah. back? And, right. and like, that, I have to just, think about, about putting the ball in your court, I wish that had happened to me. Like, as the person cheated on, both times I was not told. Mm -hmm. Both times I, I don't know, used magical intuition or something, and I knew exactly who it was, when it was, what time it happened, and I brought, broke off the relationship Deep the first down, time. Deep down, we always know. We always we know, always and know. so, I mean, I think, yeah, putting the ball, I wish, I, the, wish the ball had been put in my court. Both times I was not apologized to, they never admitted to doing it. Oh, and like, I was, damn. I've, so been, it's, I've it's, been cheated it's on too, and I, I've yeah. also been cheated on. And I, I wish, I, I wish, thoughts. I don't know when what I've been cheated on. I was yeah, as say. well. He came and told me and broke up with me and gave me no option. Well, that's so, right, okay. so that's, yeah, that's why, yeah, but let's, I let's think that that was very, very, very emotionally traumatizing yeah. for me, you know? That, because it felt like abandonment. Yeah, yeah. it did, yeah. Well, but I've never well. been abandoned before. Like, I've never experienced that. It was your that, first so. experience. Right, 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 and so it definitely, like, took time for me to get Okay. You brought up a very good point. What if someone is suicidal? If I see, I heard, I did hear that. Like, that's, that's, that made me think because I'm like, I think you should definitely disclose it at some point, somehow. And yet, if I had a partner who was so fragile mm -hmm. and I knew that-, that But how long have they been news, fragile? Were they fragile when you cheated or right. way before you having, cheated? That's kind of why- I've been in that situation. <laughs> there are safeguards you can put in place that you make sure that they're with safe, safe people, that they have people who can support them through that time. Because I have been in that situation. But what I'm saying is, I, I respect that, but the safe token, when you met this person with a suicidal person. Oh, no, I'm saying I was the suicidal person so, who was cheated on. But using that as like a deterrent for why you shouldn't tell someone, is, no, it's not no, always, no. As, as, I understand as somebody, it. No, what? as somebody who was in that situation, mm -hmm. I agree that I was still glad I was told. Mm -hmm. It's not always the cheater's fault when they cheat. I can think of one instance where I would say it's not the cheater's fault. If someone is in an abusive situation and maybe they don't feel safe to leave the relationship, I could understand why. And maybe even like they've fallen for someone else, they use that as an excuse to get out of the relationship. I would still say it stems from within, for sure. But I would that would be the one instance in which I would say I could totally understand like where the cheating came from, that it's you're not safe. I think that I have read too many accounts of women and men being taken advantage of and being put into a situation where there really is no choice. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the women that I counsel are in domestic violence households, and a lot of them have been threatened with murder if they chose to leave the relationship. And so what ends up happening is all of a sudden you're at work and you are having a conversation with a male colleague who exhibits genuine care for you and your situation. It's almost impossible to stop the inertia of love mm -hmm. from being able to take that person out of the situation. If I have to play devil's advocate, do you think replacing something that can be considered negative with another negative makes it right? It's difficult to compare like one sin to another, but I think that at the end of the day, if somebody is harming you, whether it's emotionally or physically, and they're making that choice, that's always gonna be worse to me. I also think that truth and reality really don't give a shit about right or wrong. So it's kind of like, why would I be so obsessed with labeling somebody else's decision that ultimately resulted in their safety? Yeah, might make them safer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe wrong is wrong. I do. I believe that two wrongs don't make right. There is no way, like, I, I just, that's just my personal belief. I, I don't think that. Um, but what if that person is not safe to leave? Okay. Then, okay, so, but they're okay to cheat. Yeah. But it's not, it's not a question of okay. I think that it's without partiality. Like, I can't sit here and say that somebody is right 
for cheating based we didn't off say of right. We well, just said or they're right. okay yeah. w to be able to cheat based off of the fact that they're in an abusive relationship. If you are if you are in an abusive relationship, get the heck out. But what if you can't? It's not always that. So then how is how is it that like, no one is able to oh, like yeah. tell so me? You got to talk to some girls. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, it, girl. Our question will be. Calm down. So I just want to know. I'm I'm, answer, I'm asking the question because yeah. you're saying that someone can sit there and cheat on someone based off of the fact that they're in an abusive relationship. What where does that like where does that come like how does that make that okay or? Um, make it right. Where it's, does that come It's in? not a black and white thing, and I think we keep coming to that. I don't think anybody is saying, like, it's okay. I think we're just saying it's not not okay, mm -hmm. and it's in mm -hmm. it's in the middle. But I believe in yes or no and okay or not right. okay, and right or wrong. I think Very some of bad. us are thinking black and white, and some of us just aren't those kinds of people, and I think that's yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm not open about but, that. But, but I'm not saying that being unsafe in an abusive relationship makes it okay to cheat. What I'm saying is that someone might use forming a relationship with another person as a safety net because now you have somebody else to go to because I think a lot of people don't realize but the abuse actually kicks up after you leave the relationship. Mm -hmm. It gets worse because the person who is abusing you will stalk you, will chase you, will blow up your phone, will show up at your house. It is very dangerous for people, I'm not gonna gender it, for people who are leaving abusive situations, it gets more dangerous. And so cheating, forming another relationship with somebody may actually help that person find safety. Mm -hmm. my, my question would be like, how would it help them find safety? If, if the relationship is already abusive, I would think that that would anger the person more. Yeah, to where... it doesn't matter though. That's what I'm saying. I, it's the disclosing of the say. internal reality. We are all humans in our bodies and you have a right to feel comfortable in your body and to feel safe. And whether or not you have to make a decision that that makes you immoral or whatever in order to protect your safety, that is okay in my eyes. Well, I, I, I don't think, think about right and wrong. Oh, I was raised in the church, so I was I thrilled think, a lot about black and white and right and wrong. I just can't, yeah. my dad was a pastor, I crazy. Think, oh, <laughs> I know we brought up specifics and everything, but I think if we're just looking at the specific prompt in itself, I think that the, there's always a choice. There's always a choice. I understand, you know, maybe if someone's under the influence and, you know, I can see how that could be literally blurred, but I think in general, if someone's yes, sober, cheating, cheating, is, a cheating choice. is a choice. No, I agree. And, and I think that that's best. where, and I think that's where we can put the fault on that person because they made that conscious decision. Mm -hmm. But what is and the purpose of assigning fault? Well, I mean, I'm not saying there's any Take purpose. Problem. That wasn't the prompt. Yeah. Like the prompt yeah. was yeah, like that the person the is at fault. Yeah. I'm so, trying to get but deeper. My point, my point, but no, I understand. I, I, I love that. Yeah, I will. It's still, it's still that choice to where you have to have the accountability held for you. I think that's where, where it's important mm -hmm. to have the right or wrong, yes. regardless of whether we think it's black or white. Yes, mm -hmm. I feel like if we do not have an objective choice of what is right, what is wrong, then we should just be in a world that's a free for all and mm -hmm. jails emptied out. Let's no no judicial system. The thought process in my mind, I know it was brought up that okay, that may be their only way out of the relationship. But then it was later brought up that sometimes getting out of the relationship is the worsening part. So if you're leaning towards getting out of the relationship anyway, are you going to no, create what I, a, what a I more meant havoc? is that you have a safe haven now that mm -hmm. somebody which is also might lead to more toxic situations. But I just mean if you are so desperate to get out of a relationship and you know that that abuse is gonna crank up as soon as you leave, now I have somebody else to protect me. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that again, like blame, fault. I prefer accountability. Yeah. I think that's the thing. If something can be right, something can be wrong, something can be in the middle. And right and wrong is very subjective. Exactly. Like it's very different Agreed. for at everyone. The, at, and at, yeah. Last thoughts. Last thoughts. Yeah. Right. At the at the end of the day, at the end of the day, whatever my like reason or excuse or whatever you want to call it, it was a choice that I made and I cannot put that on the other person. Face I, face. Okay, we had to move on. Any last I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing. Uh, no, we got to move on to the last concluding words. Yeah. Once a cheater, always a cheater isn't a thing. I believe that there is forgiveness. I believe that you should forgive yourself. I believe in confessing uh, to your partner. I believe in. I, I believe that 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 you owe that to that person. If you are cheating, you know uh, you need to tell them, um, and you can change. There is there there is a new life for you. Um, but that that's what I'll say. I'll leave it at that. It's great to like be able to have a conversation and see the other side and the other perspective in, in a safe space, you know? So I'm, I don't really have any concluding thoughts about the conversation other than thank you for the conversation. Yeah. To hear your perspective. 
uh, is it, it, it all made me think. And it, mm -hmm. you know, the interesting thing for me is knowing why I cheated and where I am now just as a human being with my maturity understanding of the world um, <clears throat> and my own history of abuse and, and, and trauma and how it, you know, it's like I've forgiven myself a long time ago. So it's not about that, but kudos to everyone for just yeah, being respectful yeah. and, yeah. and really being vulnerable. So, yeah. So obviously going through being cheated on, um, it wasn't a great experience, but I am, I have a different perspective than I have ever had, like that I ever would have had if I didn't get cheated on because now I know how to communicate. And I think that that's like the biggest thing and the biggest gift that we all have mm -hmm. is we're able to speak and we're able to communicate. Yeah, I think like throughout this whole conversation, I think I, I learned that communication is preventative on, on all different measures. And if we can learn how to have that communication prior to, it can help us stay away from like the hard conversations. Yeah. Right, after, after right. 100% agree. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, tell it to all of America and all of the <laughs> nuance and talking. Ask for permission, yeah. not beg for forgiveness. Sometimes. Thanks for uh, joining this episode of Middle Ground of Cheaters versus Cheated On. If you guys want to shake hands and embrace, please do so now. Thanks for the hug. Oh, thank you. 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 Th